Our area's most beautiful properties deserve the finest realtors. Meeks Realty Group. We focus on buying and selling residential and commercial properties throughout the tri-state area. Contact Meeks Realty Group online at meeks.us or call 304-440-1101. The views and opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of 580 WCHS, its employees, or WVRC Media. From the studios of WVRC Media... The country, the United States of America, the state, West Virginia, the city, Charleston. This is the Dave Allen Show on 580 Live. And your host. What we've got here is failure to communicate. He's kind of a big deal. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Dave Allen. Hey folks, hey, good snowy Tuesday morning to you. Not from the Parmar Store Studio. I'm opted to do the show remotely today. Welcome to the Dave Allen Show on 580 Live, the voice of Charleston WCHS. Biggly Piggly Wiggly Hotline 304-345-5858. I'll give you the Fruit Pharmacy text line, but unfortunately when I'm remote, I don't have access to the text. Maybe I'll get to them tomorrow. Fruit Pharmacy text 304-935-500. The Dave Allen Show on 580 Live brought to you. By Thornhill Auto Group, including the all-new Thornhill Toyota on the Thornhill Motor Mile, U.S. 119 in Chabaville. Their grand opening celebration continues as an in-person on U.S. 119, the Thornhill Motor Mile, or online at thornhilltoyotawv.com. And we do the show for the Parmar Source Studio, even when it's on the road, as it is today. Parmar and Game Changer presenting the annual Parmar Shootout on the campus of West Virginia State University, February the 5th through the 8th. Four big days, eight exciting boys and girls basketball games each day. First game tip off at 9.30 a.m. For a complete list of games, visit Parmar Stores on Facebook or X. And if there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. What a wonderful world. Uh, we still have an hour or so uh, to go with this winter storm morning as uh, Carrie and Kat and uh, Jeff will be telling you throughout the morning. Uh, it should expire at that time. After that, it's just going to be cold. And I mean really, really cold, especially overnight tonight and tomorrow morning. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, plus Judge Mary Claire Akers is in the studio this morning, as is Charleston Mayor Amy Schuler Goodwin. The mayor is set to give her State of the City speech tonight as part of the city council meeting. Details on all that coming up. Uh, but first, I want to get to this. you got to have something to put you in a good mood on, on a winter day like today, maybe warm you up a little bit. How about some chili? Well, we all love a good pot of chili on a cold day. And uh, for this event, though, you may have to wait a little a couple of days because it's actually this Saturday. The Adam Creek Alliance is sponsoring their first annual chili cook-off. Starts at 10 a.m. this Saturday morning at the Washington District Community Center on Sandplant Road in South Charleston. Chrissy Ball is from the Allen Creek Alliance, and she joins us now. Chrissy, good morning. Hey, good morning, Dave. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you for being here. Are you staying warm and, and staying safe this morning? Oh, yes. I'm hibernating today. <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as am I, you know, and it's a great time. I Actually, my wife and I actually... She did uh, made a pot of chili here uh, yesterday at the house. Great time for chili uh, as we uh, as we uh, head into this uh, the coldest of winter months. Where did this um, idea for the chili cook-off come from? We'll get into all the details a little bit, but where did the whole idea come from? Yeah, so we are the Allen Creek Alliance, like you mentioned, nonprofit organization. We represent the community, do a lot of things in the community, provide scholarships, work with the elementary schools utterly. And the Washington District community building is new. Um, it's a new built um, for our organization. It's also there's a South Charleston Fire Department located in it as well. Um, but we are now able to have community events and do things like this, like the chili cook-off. Um, we plan on in the future having more events and more things um, going on at the Washington District Community Center. Now, I've got a flyer posted on uh, on my uh, uh, social media on the X, formerly uh, artist woman on his Twitter, and also on Dave Allen Radio, if you'd like to be able to check that out. But in addition to the chili cook-off, we'll get back to that in a moment, there's also a cornhole tournament going on as part of this. Is that right? Yes, yes. So there's cornhole, so if chili's not your thing, and you want to show off your cornhole skills, um, we will have that as well. And it's not too late to sign up, but, yeah, absolutely. There will be cornhole and, and the chili bow. And as far as the chili cook-off itself goes, what are the rules this time around? Because there are, you know, I've been a part of various uh, chili events uh, in my time. I'm a kind of chili aficionado. How are, you, uh, how are you working this one out? So what are the rules? 
Um, yes, yeah, so there's not, not a whole lot of rules, but you can either make the chili at home and bring it in a crock pot, mm-hmm. or you can make it at the district community building center. You can make it there. So either way, um, either way you can make it. So we just try not to, if there's anything in it, people that will have allergies, we just ask that you let others know um, in case peanut allergy or whatnot. So we do <laughs> ask that you list the ingredients that's in the chili. Yeah, well, that's, that's kind of important right now. Again, we're talking with Christy yeah. Bailey from the Allen Creek Alliance about uh, this big event that's going to be happening this week. Get back to the Allen Creek Alliance for a moment. You gave us a little bit of the background on that. You do scholarships and things of that nature. How did this organization come into being? Um, gosh, the Allen Creek Alliance has been around for many, many years. Um, it was originally started. Um, Clyde Wooten, who is a lifetime long member, he has been in the Allen Creek Alliance for, I believe, might quote me wrong on this, 50 years. Um, so it's been around for a long time. Now, during COVID, we didn't do anything. We we backed down, and nothing's been active for the past three to four years. Um, but we are now getting back into and starting again. Um, we do have 13, 14 members, um, so we are growing. If anyone's interested, go to our Allen Creek Alliance page, and we do are welcoming new members right now. All right, we'll get back to that a little bit more a little bit later on. Again, Christy Bailey's with us from the Allen Creek Alliance. The Dave Allen Show on 580 Live brought to you part by General Hardware and Lumber of Winfield. Come check out their new contractor showroom, Lumber Yard and Boar. They deliver service and quality right to your door. Don't buy it till you get a quote from General Hardware and Lumber of Winfield. Now, back to the uh, Washington District Community Center. I mean, it's so important for these local communities to have community centers uh, like this one, Chrissy. And this is uh, another one of the great ones that we have here in the Kanawha Valley because I know it's very, very much utilized and appreciated by the community there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so it's open to the public during the day. Um, you can go in. You can shoot some hoops. There's basketball courts. Um, it's a huge gym. And you can also rent it. So if you're having a private party, birthday party, um, or anniversary party or get-together, you can rent the building as well. And, uh, and, again, we'll get to give you that information if you're interested in uh, doing a rental on the building uh, a little bit uh, later on. Um, and, 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 as I said, these community centers are so, so important to local communities like that. And I know it's very much appreciated uh, by, the, uh, by the community there. So, in addition to the chili and the uh, cornhole tournament, what else you got going on there this Saturday? We have some awesome door prizes and raffle tickets. And, trust me, you don't want to miss the door prizes. They are awesome. Um, so Give me an example you, of some of those door prizes. Oh, we're going to have, as um, far as I know, we're going to have a big stone griddle grill, like a, their grill. And we also have a spa basket, so it's going to be a spa bliss gift certificate for $200, um, along with some other items that ladies will really enjoy. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be a great day. And, again, weather mm-hmm. um, not looking too good. I think we're going to have some snow. They tell us back at the forecast Thursday and Friday. But hopefully by mm-hmm. this weekend things will kind of clear up a little bit, get everybody out there. But it is going to be cold, mm-hmm. so it'll be a great time. I think temperatures uh, both Saturday and Sunday are supposed to be in the 20s. So it'll be a great time to go enjoy some uh, chili and cornhole. And to check out that center, too, because it's an opportunity for people that may have heard about the center but have never been there. It's an opportunity for them to be able to go and kind of tour the facility and find out what it's all about. Yes, absolutely. That is a great opportunity, like you just said, Dave, to come out and at least tour the building. And that way, if you're interested in hosting an event or renting it or even just going to walk and shoot some hoops in the wintertime, it's just a great facility. Indeed it is. Again, uh, Chrissy Balls from the Allen Creek Alliance, I do appreciate you taking time to join us on the show uh, today. Now, again, where can people learn more? Um, go to the Allen Creek Alliance Facebook page. That's going to be your best bet. Um, we have links out there provided with QR codes to sign up. If you're, It's not too late to sign up for the chili or the cornhole, but it provides all the information on our Facebook page, and there's also information about the, the Washington District building as well. All right, Christy, I appreciate you t- uh, taking time on your schedule to join us this morning. Best of luck with your event this weekend. We'll talk soon. Thanks a lot. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Thank you. Christy Ball again for the Palm Creek Alliance. Uh, and, again, if it's chilly you like or cornhole, this is definitely the event for you. It's sponsored by the Allen Creek Alliance this Saturday starting at 10 at the Washington District Community Center. That's at 1313 Sandplant Road in South Charleston. 
information posted about it on Dave Allen Radio and Facebook and the Dave Allen Show on X. Appreciate Christy for taking time uh, for joining us here today. The Dave Allen Show on 589 is brought to you in part by Brightway, the maze agency of Taze Valley. Buying auto insurance can be complicated. That's why you need a local person to look out for you. At Brightway, the maze agency, they can customize your policies with coverages you need and want. Call John and Cherry Mays today, 304-814-2509 or visit brightwaymaze.com. Coming up a little bit later on the show, we've got uh, Judge Mary Claire Akers standing by. We'll go to her in just a couple of moments. Also, Charles Tamir, Amy Goodwin is uh, joining us as well because uh, tonight is the uh, State of the City address on behalf of the mayor, and we'll talk to her about that a little bit later on. And if we have time at the end of the show, I definitely want to talk about the Iowa caucuses. I know it's a national story, and Hoppy will get into it at 10.06, but I definitely want to uh, get into that a little bit uh, later on in the show, uh, simply because, um, well, you know, a lot can change between now and then. Let's go back and, uh, and let's remember that um, that Ted Cruz won the uh, 2016 Iowa caucuses, and we saw how that turned out. But this thing right now, folks, it looks like it's Donald Trump's to lose. Uh, and uh, we're going to get into that coming up a little bit later on. So, uh, yeah, so hang around with us. We'll be back right after this as we've got Judge Mary Claire Akers standing by next. Back after this on The Voice of Charleston, WCHS. Are you a physical therapy assistant and looking for an opportunity in orthopedics, wellness, and athletic care? If so, Generations Physical Therapy is offering flexible work hours and an upbeat atmosphere. With seven convenient locations, Generations may have a job designed for you. Visit GenerationsPT.com. Hey, it's Sydney welcoming you to the new Thornhill Toyota. Nestled in the heart of the Thornhill Motor Mile where the magic of the holidays meets the thrill of toyota Thon. Whether you're dashing through the snow or cruising to Mama's house, toyota Thon at Thornhill Toyota has something for everyone. Unwrap incredible savings, special financing, and the joy of driving a brand new Toyota. Make this season merrier with us at Thornhill Toyota. Let's go places with Toyota Thon and Thornhill. Shop Thornhill Toyota WV.com and on the road to total savings, US 119 Chapmanville. See Thornhill for all details. Thrive with five at the best community bank in the Canal Valley, Poca Valley Bank. Poca Valley Bank is now offering a certificate of deposit special, 10-month APY, annual percentage yield 5%. Take advantage of this great rate to grow your savings. For more information, stop by a Poca Valley Bank location today or call 844-782-2651. Poca Valley Bank, where relationships matter. Certain terms and conditions apply. Rates based on minimum annual percentage yield. Subject to change without notice. Minimum deposit required of $10,000 of new money not currently on deposit with Poca Valley Bank to receive APY. Member FDIC. Nearly every day, there is a company announcing new jobs in West Virginia. Thanks to the leadership of State Senator Eric Nelson, West Virginia's economy is growing and our future looks bright. Senator Eric Nelson has been part of the team advancing important pro-growth policies, and because Senator Eric Nelson has helped control government spending, West Virginians are receiving the biggest tax cut in our state's history. Vote for more jobs. Vote for lower taxes. Vote for State Senator Eric Nelson. Paid for by the committee to elect Eric Nelson. Coming up on 920. Dave Allen Show and 580 Live, the voice of Charleston, WCHS, Bigly Piggly Wiggly Hotline, 304-345-5858, Fruit Pharmacy Text, 304-935-5008. The Dave Allen Show and 580 Live, brought to you part by East Coast Tees and the Vinyl Frontier. Attention political candidates for the best in political signs, big and small. Get with the Vinyl Frontier and East Coast Tees. Make a statement for your campaign with the Vinyl Frontier and East Coast Tees. Go to eastcoasttees.com and see what they can do for you. Judge Mary Claire Akers is standing by. We'll get to her in a couple of moments. Also, uh, Charleston Mayor Amy Goodwin is coming up as well. You know, Special Olympics embodies the true spirit of sportsmanship. It's not merely about winning medals. It's about being a part of the team, practicing and competing together. The joy and fulfillment derived from these experiences are immeasurable as athletes find their confidence and self-worth through the sheer pursuit of victory. West Virginia Enriched, in collaboration with Huntington, invites you to witness the transformative power of Special Olympics See a video highlighting the Special Olympics at Facebook.com slash 580WCHS. Want to welcome you to the show, Judge Mary Claire Akers, your judgeship. Good morning. Good morning, Dave. And they uh, did sit me in your chair, so I'm right here in the middle. I, I feel like I've, I've got the master plan right here. I can touch anything, change anything, mess anything up. <laughs> I'm really excited. That's that's probably uh, not necessarily a, a good idea. So this means I get to go sit on the bench. Is that right? <laughs> that's right. You, that's fine. I'll trade you. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. I bet you would. <laughs> My job's a heck of a lot easier than yours. Uh, I, I was joking with somebody earlier. I said that two acres is for the price of one because I had your husband, the newest member of the legislature, J.B. Acres, out of the 55th on the show yesterday. Uh, J.B., of course, appointed to the position last week just prior to the start of the session, replacing Mark Capito, who resigned to focus on his race for governor. Uh, as someone who's been in office for a while, and I know you got to watch what you say, whatever, but any advice? For Judge Akers, as, as you have been an elected official, now he is one. Well, you know, it's it's funny. You you mentioned the rules. So we have rules as judges. We are not allowed to endorse any public official or any candidate for office, even if we're married to them. But I will say this. <laughs> Um, he is the much better acres. He's way more <laughs> fair minded and he is he's much smarter than I am. So I'm very proud of him. Our whole family is. I know he's going to do great things. I'm just very, very excited to see everything that he does. As for, you know, I can't tell him tell him what to do um, in office. Obviously, I can tell him what to do at home. And as long well, as he, yeah. yeah, as long as he keeps in, in doing those things and, and keeps in those roles and I think he's going to be OK. And that's general advice available for any candidate. So, so again, that is not an endorsement by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> that's exactly I want right. to spend some time. I want to spend some time, Judge, talking about the judicial races here in mm-hmm. uh, uh, in Kanawha County because I've had several candidates on the show and others uh, wanting to be on. And there's several people that want to be a judge here in Kanawha County, but for the voters, uh, Judge, it can be a bit confusing. Figure out who is running against whom. So, take it slow because I'm not very smart. I mostly looks. Explain the way this entire thing works? Well, there are currently seven divisions uh, in the 13th Circuit of Kanawha County, and that's our circuit, the 13th Circuit, currently as it is right now. The confusing part, I think, is that people don't understand that there are seven different divisions now, and in the upcoming race in 2025, there will be eight divisions. Uh, the legislature created another circuit court position for um, many different circuits here in West Virginia, and ours was one of them. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, legislature. That's my plug. Um, mm-hmm. And we will have an additional seat that is open that no one occupies now um, that will be created. So there will be eight different divisions. The new one is designated as the eighth division. The other thing that will change is our circuit number. We are changing from the 13th circuit to the 8th circuit. I don't think that's really that big of an issue and and that confusing, but I do think that the different divisions are. You know, for example, my own mother called me yesterday and asked me if Stephanie Abraham was running against me. Um, She is not. She she occupies uh, the seat that was formerly held by uh, Judge Bloom, and she's Mm -hmm. running for re-election. But that's just an example uh, of of kind of the confusion that it causes people. I think it's it's hard to figure out who's running for what and if there any if if there are opponents and if so who. So be careful to look for the division numbers. I think is is the best advice I can say. Again, we're talking to Judge Mary Claire Akers here on the Dave Allen Show on Five Eighty Live, and you are a candidate, Judge. I am. We are running. All of us are up at the same time. Our general election is actually the primary because it is a nonpartisan election. So we will be finished in May. Um, those, that's another thing that I think voters maybe don't understand or isn't as clear, is that when you're voting for judges in May, that is the election. That is it for us. Um, so come out and, and vote. And I think it's also hard to get people kind of engaged in the judicial races. People don't really uh, want to be involved in the judicial system. I don't really blame them. And once they're there, you know, they, they understand a little bit better. But it is hard to communicate to the public why it's important to come out and vote for, for your judicial officers. Yeah, sometimes I think that those judges' seats, with all due respect, and some of the other nonpartisan, that's not the one that gets all of the attention uh, when it comes to advertising and things of that nature, simply because, again, the rules, in uh, according to West Virginia Code, the rules uh, are a bit uh, – strict on what you are allowed to do and sometimes you know those and the the thing about a judge position or or maybe a magistrate or somebody like that is people will say well i I don't know who they are because i've never been in front of them that's (laughs) right unless it makes unless it makes news stories you know on our station or others and sometimes people don't realize that but but those are are very very important and especially right now and you and i and the other candidates for that matter uh that have uh, and sitting judges have talked about this in the past with the things we have going on with the opioid epidemic, uh, opi- opioid epidemic and the crisis we have uh, from the foster care system and so on and so forth. I mean, the role of a judge is probably now more important than what it's ever been. I think so. And I think it, it's hard to translate to people that 
you know, how judicial officers and judicial decisions impact their daily lives. I think people are starting to see that. I think the media has been good about educating the public um, regarding those those issues and how people can see it working in their daily lives. But And I'm glad you brought up the magistrates uh, because the magistrate court system here in Kanawha County has actually gained three new magistrate court positions. So right now there are 10 magistrates on the ballot in May of 2024 will be 13. Uh, they, they also have different divisions, and their rules are different regarding who runs where. But it's important for people to know there are going to be three extra positions for magistrate open. And, you know, if you're thinking about getting out there and running, that's a, those are good races to get into. Uh, there's three new positions uh, up there for anyone to grab that wants them. Yeah, and again, uh, the filing period rolls uh, through the uh, end of the month, so you still got time. Twenty seventh, I think it is, uh, on that Saturday, so you still got time to file if you if you'd like to do that. That's the Dave great. Allen Show on Five Eighty Live is brought to you by Pinnacle Consultants, the only accredited commercial lab in West Virginia for asbestos and mold. Asbestos was banned in some building products, but isn't banned for all products in the U.S. Don't expose your family or workers to asbestos, mold, or lead paint. Get with Pinnacle Consultants; they offer real estate and environmental assessments. For hazardous materials and air quality, visit PinnacleCorp.net, PinnacleCorp.net, because what you don't know can hurt you. Now, as we mentioned earlier, uh, Judge, the judges' seats are nonpartisan, which I think uh, people need to know that. Now, obviously, everyone uh, everyone running has a party uh, in West Virginia, even if you don't have a party, so have a party, if That's that makes correct. any sense. Um, everyone is something. And I bring this up because I read an interesting back and forth on social media uh, not long ago about this. Uh, one of the candidates who was running for judge, doesn't matter who, uh, had, a, had done a boosted post, meaning that they pay Facebook you know, to run their ads. And someone had asked what party the candidate was, and there was some back and forth between someone other than the candidate and this person, this commenter, about what the party was. And the person, person two in all this, just hang with me here, person two <laughs> was just trying to explain that the seats are nonpartisan, while person one trying to make a big deal out of it, saying that the candidate was hiding what their party was, and so on and so forth. I know it's a lot of word salad on my part of a simple Google search, and that person could have found out what party the candidate was. Anyway, I say all that to say this, just pointed out that the rules are a bit different when you are running for judge. They are. We actually did just get a brand new opinion from our judicial investigation commission saying that we can identify the parties that we are with, but we have to, in the same statement, say that we are running for a nonpartisan position. So, for instance, I can say, I'm Mary Claire Akers. I'm running as a Republican for Division uh, 7. That'll be the Eighth Circuit when it comes up. But I have Mm -hmm. to say that that is a a nonpartisan race. So I'm a Republican running in a nonpartisan race. I'm allowed to say that now. Um, that that opinion is fairly new, um, so I don't really know how it's going to translate across the state as far as in the judicial races. I think some of the candidates are doing it, and you're right, doesn't matter who, uh, but it is that is now permissible within the rules where I, I think before people didn't realize that they could or maybe felt like they could not do that. And it does make the public think that, that judges are hiding who they are and, and their party affiliation. Well, we're really not. Uh, is, there's just some uncertainty. We've, we've got more certainty now, but uh, before now, we have not had a good indicator as to whether or not we should do that. So we don't. And and again, I think that more than likely, with West Virginia being what it is right now, you know, it's so it's such a bright red state. But for years, it was a, before we used the term red and blue. West Virginia was a blue state. I think that you'll probably see a lot more of that in advertising now, where candidate X will say, you know, as you said, I'm a Republican running, or as they would have said 20 years ago, I'm a Democrat running. That's so right. they want to make sure that people uh, realize that. Let's talk about your uh, campaign, and more importantly, the time you've already spent on the bench. Well, what what kind of questions do you have? Right now, I am <laughs> I'm the chief judge of the circuit right now, uh, which a lot of people have congratulated me on. It's it's not really an honor. We rotate that position every year, so I just happen to be up. Um, so it is going to be my job to kind of oversee the courthouse and make sure things run correctly. I am the complaint box and the suggestion box. So so it's a, a place of a little bit of um, uncertainty for me because I've never done it before, and we're starting to – um, deal with some maybe judicial renovations depending on how the county commission votes because we're having these new offices. So I will be helping with that. And the other thing we will be doing, which really doesn't, the general public's probably like yawn when I say this, but mm-hmm. the Kanawha County Circuit is going to go to what's called e-filing. We've never done that before. 
it's going to affect all of the lawyers and all of uh, the different agencies that deal with the court system in Kanawha County. It's going to be a big undertaking for everyone, including our clerk. Uh, so I'll be presiding over that kind of stuff. And, you know, if there's a problem in the courthouse, then I'm the first person to hear about it and, and determine what needs to be done. But I would think that the attorneys, though, would be much in favor of this to be able to e-file. Is that right? I'm sorry. Yeah, I think so. E-filing has gone, has been implemented across the state, and I think a lot of lawyers mm-hmm. are, are used to it. We're just not in Kanawha County. They saved us as um, for for one of the last because we're so big, and I think it they were you know wanted to see how it it did across the state. So we're Talk one of the last judge. ones. Uh, Talking to, uh, to Judge Mary Claire Akers here on uh, the Dave Allen Show on 580 Live. It's uh, 931. All right, so I'm going to ask you this, and then we're going to go to something a little bit fun. Why should people vote for Mary Claire Akers for judge? Well, I, I think that I'm a very uh, tough judge. I think that, that that's my reputation, but I am very fair. I will give people an opportunity, especially in recovery, if I feel like they they are willing to accept that they need help. I'm willing to give them a break on the criminal side of it if they really want to work on themselves and and change their lives. I I love to do that. I love to see the end result of that. Um, I have actually, in 2021, when I took office, I had almost 300 juvenile abuse and neglect cases on my docket. I've been able to resolve it. We are down to around 100, and that number fluctuates. But that's just on my docket, just to remind everybody out there. I think we had last year a little bit over 800 abuse and neglect cases just filed in that one year. Um, so we're all dealing with those cases. I was just able to take a backlog and, and work it down. It took about two and a half years, almost three, to get it done. I do have a juvenile abuse and neglect prosecutor uh, now assigned to my courtroom. Her name is Madison Tuck. Those those folks don't get a, enough recognition because those proceedings are private they're, they're closed. Nobody can see them except the people involved, and she's doing a great job, so I wanted to give her a shout-out. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Dave Allen, Chill on 580 Live is brought to you by, by Hudson's Pizza. This month, at your favorite Hudson's. Get a large 18-inch pepperoni pizza and an order of appetizer meatballs, only twenty four ninety nine. dollars 99 Dine-in, delivery, or pickup. Visit Hudson'sPizza.com. All right, let's get to something fun here before we cut you loose. All right. You're going to be marrying up a lot of people. <laughs> Uh, as we get closer to Valentine's Day. We'll have you on again to talk about this. This is something that was uh, started uh, by another judge at another time. Uh, But explain this whole marathon wedding thing that uh, that you're going to be doing here soon. So on Valentine's Day, February 14th, we have the annual King of Hearts Day to remember Charlie King, who started that. Uh, He started, he had the original King of Hearts Day, and we do that every year on Valentine's Day. We love to do it. People come in, get married spontaneously. We have people call and make reservations uh, to get married, and that's what we do. We decorate the courtroom. We spend all day doing weddings, and it's really fun. Um, Since I've been judge, I think I've married almost 300 couples. Last year, we did about 120. So this year, we're trying to break that record. So if you guys are planning on a wedding out there and you're trying to figure out what to do, come by my courtroom on February 14th. It's great fun. We have a blast. And again, uh, that is actually going to be on a Wednesday, so it'll be the middle of the week. A great time to go ahead and uh, and get uh, and get married up. And uh, I think that some of our people, we had a little meeting, and we'll give you some inside baseball information, Judge. We had a little meeting there at the station yesterday, and I think that some of our promotions department want to get involved in that this year. So you're going to be getting a call from Ashley in our promotions department, just so you know, to see how we can kind of help you out with this. How's that? All right. I would love to do it. The, the, the more word we can get out about that, the better, because it really is a fun day. Well, I'll have you on uh, from before then, and then I think last year you actually, in between services, uh, called us up on the uh, on the show as well. So we'll, well talk I think to I you. Did. I forgot about that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, you did. You actually called. You actually put somebody's uh, wedding on hold so you could call in for a five minute phone <laughs> conversation. I hope they didn't have in that time the opportunity to talk each other out of it or to pour, or to get into a fight. If they did, that's on you. No, nope, so, uh, they we'll still did. All right. All right, Judge Mary Claire Akers, always, Your Honor, a pleasure to have you on the show. We'll talk again soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Dave. All right. Thank you, Judge Mary Claire Akers. It is uh, 935, the Dave Allen Show, 580 Live, brought to you in part by Bridge Valley. Are you interested in improving your company's IT workforce? Well, did you know that Bridge Valley offers custom tailored IT training to bridge the skills gap? At Bridge Valley, you can train for little or no cost. With a 50-50 salary match, Bridge Valley can also supply skilled graduates and apprenticeships for your company. Visit bridgevalley.edu slash apprenticeships today for more information. Tonight, the mayor of Charleston, Amy Goodwin, will be giving her State of the City speech. We'll talk to the mayor right after this on The Voice of Charleston, WCHS. 
Brought to you by the Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses. Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses care for your family. Hey, it's Sydney welcoming you to the new Thornhill Toyota. Nestled in the heart of the Thornhill Motor Mile where the magic of the holidays meets the thrill of Toyota Thon. Whether you're dashing through the snow or cruising to Mama's house, Toyota Thon at Thornhill Toyota has something for everyone. Unwrap incredible savings, special financing, and the joy of driving a brand new Toyota. Make this season merrier with us at Thornhill Toyota. Let's go places with Toyota Thon and Thornhill. Shop ThornhillToyotaWV.com and on the road to total savings, US 119 Chapmanville. See Thornhill for all details. West Virginia's top high school basketball talent will come together February the 5th through the 8th on the campus of West Virginia State University as Game Changer and Parmar stores present the Parmar Shootout. The shootout has been extended to four full days this year. Come see the top boys and girls teams in the state battle it out. 32 games in all. The first games tip off at 930 each morning. Game Changer and Parmar stores present the Parmar Shootout on the campus of West Virginia State University February 5th through the 8th. For a complete list of games, visit Parmar stores on Facebook and X. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Unsure you're ready for retirement? That's understandable. After all, you only retire once. Make the smart choice and call 4th Avenue Financial. If it deals with retirement planning, you can be confident they have the experience you need. Retire right with 4th Avenue Financial. Go to 4thAvenueFinancial.com or call 304-746-7977 to book your free introductory meeting today. Securities offered through JW Cole Financial Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC. Advisory services offered through JW Cole Advisors Incorporated, JW Cole Financial, JW Cole Advisors, and 4th Avenue Financial are unaffiliated entities. Hello, I am Judge Stephanie Abraham, and I am running for circuit court here in Kanawha County. Judge Stephanie Abraham was appointed to the circuit court by Governor Jim Justice. Judge Stephanie Abraham owned and managed her own law firm and was an attorney for the Department of Education and General Counsel for the State Board of Education. Judge Stephanie Abraham is a fair and balanced but tough judge who will always follow the Constitution to protect liberty and achieve justice for all. I am Judge Stephanie Abraham. I appreciate your vote for Kanawha County Circuit Court. Paid for by the committee to elect Judge Stephanie Abraham. Twenty-two minutes away from ten. Bigly, bigly, quickly. Hotline three zero four three four five fifty eight fifty eight. We promise you text three zero four nine three five five zero zero eight. Ryan Nicholson and the A Train Anthony Harmon are doing things back in the studio. My producer uh, today is a cat by the name of Grady uh, because, and actually, I put Grady's picture on my social media. So if you want to see, you know, the cutest cat in the world, that's my producer this morning. It's posted on my social media because I am doing the show uh, remotely. Uh, this morning. Phone calls to the Dave Allen Show, our service of Bigly Piggly Wiggly. When shopping at your Bigly Piggly Wiggly, be sure to join their loyalty program. You can save big at the gas pumps and throughout the store with their electronic coupons and free gifts on Fridays just for stopping by from farm to table. Bigly Piggly Wiggly, the best kept secret in Charleston. Texting service is provided by Fruit Pharmacy, your hometown family pharmacy. Find the perfect over the counter hearing aid at Fruit with Nuvo Med hearing aids. Plus, Fruit makes it easier to transfer your prescription services to them than it ever has been. Fruit, again, has been your hometown family pharmacy for a number of years. Charleston Mayor Amy Goodwin is uh, standing by. We'll get to her here in a couple of moments. She's running just a tad late this morning because she's been working the streets. I probably could have phrased that better. Uh, but uh, she is out uh, with the street crews this morning, I understand. <laughs> So uh, she just sent me a text again. I'm remote, so whenever she gets there, she's just going to jump into the show and uh, and kind of just jump on and uh, tell us about the state of the city uh, address, which is going to be happening tonight as uh, part of the Charleston City Council meeting that starts at 7. Of course, we'll have complete coverage of that, so follow along on all the social media and on the website, wvmetronews.com and at wchsnetwork.com as well. While I've got a moment and we're waiting on the mayor, let me tell you about this event. We've been talking about it for a couple of weeks now. We are really, really excited uh, to do. We are uh, um, going to be uh, teaming up with the folks at, uh, at the Thornhill Auto Group, which is the sponsors of this show, for an event that we call Drop Your Socks. Now, it's a drive through event, and it's going to be this coming Thursday. This is kind of the baby, if you will, the brainchild of uh, our morning guy on our sister station, 96.1 Superstar Country, KWS, Rob Real, host of Up Real Early. He he got this idea, and I think he's probably done this in one of the many, many other markets he's been fired from. Uh, but uh, basically what we're asking people to do is starting early on uh, 6, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock or so on Thursday morning, stop by our studios, 1111 Virginia Street East in Charleston, and drop off some packages of socks we want we want your socks uh you can drop off a single package that you can pick up at a at a dollar store somewhere or we want an entire box 
that you have gotten, you know, from whatever your favorite apartment store is or you've ordered or whatever the case may be. We're going to uh, be working with the folks at Mountain Mission to get those uh, in need this wintertime season. And the timing, you know, we scheduled this thing, you know, a couple of months ago. We had no idea that the weather would be like it is right now, uh, but uh, we'll be out there Thursday morning. It's going to be about seven or eight degrees or so out there when uh, Rob and myself and other people from all of our stations are going to be out there collecting these uh, socks. You can do it throughout the day, so you don't have to necessarily be there early in the morning. We're going to be doing it until about six o'clock or so that evening, so please, please, please stop by our studios, 1111 Virginia Street East in Charleston. Drop us off some packages of socks We're calling it the Drop Your Socks campaign, and a big, big shout-out to the sponsors of this show, the title sponsor, the folks at Thornhill Auto Group, for making it all possible. We couldn't do it without them. We appreciate them. We've already heard from several members of the community, uh, business community, otherwise, church groups, whatever, saying, hey, we want to take part. What do we need to do? And so uh, they're, they're, they're arranging that for us right now, so we appreciate that. But, again, we always say, whether it's this or whether it's any of the other, specific things that we do throughout the year. We have the best listeners in the entire city of Charleston, the entire state, in my opinion. You guys always come out for us and um, uh, and, uh, and help us out, so we appreciate you. Please do that. Again, it is the uh, Drop Your Socks event, and it's happening at our studios, 1111 Virginia Street East in Charleston. This Thursday, it's sponsored by the Thornhill Auto Group, so we definitely appreciate those folks at Thornhill for making it all possible. The Dave Allen Show on 580 Live is brought to you part by Meeks Realty Group. Discover the unrivaled expertise of Meeks, your ultimate partners in all things real estate, whether it's your dream home or that ideal commercial space. Meeks is your covered. Contact Rich the Realtor, 304-932-7488. Let Rich and the team guide you on your real estate journey. Take a look at all their listings at meeks.us. I believe the mayor is working her way into the studio right now. Uh, just got a text from her a moment ago uh, that, that she was walking into the building. Uh, <laughs> are you there, in. mayor? I was running in, actually, not walking. Well, I mean, well, I, don't run. Yeah, I was don't running. Run. Well, it's slick outside, so I, it's just, it was well, a slow was, slog, jog. So I was saying uh, don't run. <laughs> uh, so before we talk about the state of the sure. city tonight, talk about winter in the city. I'm channeling my inner John Sebastian and Love and Spoonful here. Um, uh, it's been a rough couple of days for city workers. Another snow event coming in Thursday night into Friday. Talk about the work that they've been doing there. Yeah, you know, when when you talk about municipal government, this is this is our jam. This is our meat and potatoes. So we have had hundreds of city workers out nonstop. These are folks that literally, and by the way, the reason why I was late is I stopped. Uh, I saw one of our road crews out and stopped to just give them our thanks. But, you know, they're eating, sleeping, uh, um, and around the clock thinking about um, the roads and keeping their eyes to the sky. Um, We have still left, um, believe it or not, about 4,000 tons of salt, but we've thrown down a lot of salt. We've scraped a lot of roads, constantly 17 trucks out. Uh, Mother Nature, she's fickle sometimes. Uh, (laughs) So we thought this storm was going to end, and then it picked up a little bit. Um, And so, you know, I was was out driving on the roads yesterday and today. Just go slow. If you're out and about, please go slow. And one thing I want to mention is, you know, Facebook. God God loves Facebook because there are very few people that do anymore sometimes. But, um, you know, when somebody says, oh, I, you know, our road d- didn't get scraped or salted, keep in mind that even though 17 trucks are out, some of our trucks break down. You know, you, you, you use them constantly, and they're very heavy and big pieces of equipment. It's not like your car or my car, Dave, right? We're running the shop real quick, and it's, you know, a 30-minute fix. Sometimes it takes mm-hmm. an hour or two if something goes wrong. We had a truck on a route go down yesterday in Kanawha City on some of the hills, so I saw somebody say, why aren't you here? They normally are here by now. Well, well, that's what happened. Uh, so give them a little bit of grace. And that also includes our refuse. By the way, they're out picking up trash today, Dave. And so, you know, it's, you know, they have until five o'clock tonight. We obviously don't want to be out in dark picking up trash. So, right. you know, they're out, but they're going slow and they're going slower than normal. And you want us to go a little slower than normal. So if you if today is your trash day, buddy, they're coming. Uh, and if they normally, uh, you know, come by this time, just leave that can out for us, please. We're, we're going to get there, but it just may take us uh, just a heartbeat more of time today. And, you know, I know that our guys and gals really appreciate, you know, the high five. I ran out of my house um, late last night to, you know, honk and wave and, and thank uh, our folks who are out there 
um, because that's that, that's what they do. And they're really good at it. You know, we have a lot mm-hmm. of good folks. We have a little new drivers uh, who have trained for this uh, and who are out there just uh, doing a great job today. Very few, knock on wood. You don't have any wood on your desk, Dave. Oh, here, knock on wood. Um, uh, you know, accidents. And it's because I think, you know, fortunately, there's a lot of school kids and parents who are running late for school are not on the roads this morning. Right. Uh, yeah. So we're thankful about that. Uh, gosh, she was even Marshall University um, stopped their online classes or um, in-person classes yeah. today. Uh, so, you know, it's 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 serious and it's serious because of the temperature drop. Right. So snow on the ground. Yeah, that's troublesome. But it's that ice and it's those freezing temperatures. As you duly note, We've, we are going to take a breath uh, tomorrow, Dave, and then mm-hmm. get right back into it. That's why I know that number, 4,000 tons of salt <laughs> on the top of my head, because we monitor that, how much we need, uh, placing another order just in case. You know, people say all the time, you have all of that salt. Well, this is why, folks, because sometimes Mother Nature, she, you know, she hits us twice in a week, not just once. So Thursday into Friday, everybody still, if you have Friday morning plans, just, you know, maybe... Uh, take your time, maybe plan right now for then. It's, and the, the problem with this Thursday storm, as we know right now, I'm not pl- trying to take over Brian Hughes, right, his job. He's got, <laughs> there's a lot of, <laughs> Brandon and uh, all, of our good, uh, all of our good friends who are, are true meteorologists. I just play one in the mayor's office. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's supposed to be drive time. We think it might start around drive time, which is always the trickiest part for us. So make mm-hmm. make plans now. And then fortunately next week it'll probably warm up a little bit. Okay, my meteorologist job is over. I'm done, Dave. Okay. That's it. Well, I was going to say, uh, I was looking at the extended <laughs> forecast next week. Uh, they say uh, one of the uh, meteorologists I think this yeah. morning said that it may be uh, close to 60 by, yeah, by one day next week. That's right. Certainly. Certainly good news there. That's right. All right, let's talk about the state of the uh, city. What could your speeches tonight, 7 o'clock, as part of Charleston City Council? What can we expect? Yeah, I'm really excited about this year. Um, You know, I I tend to say that every year. Um, Last year was, uh, you know, my start of my four year term that I'm currently in. So this makes my, I'm in one of, I've got another three years on this term. Um, And, you know, tonight I started the state of the city five years ago as a tradition that I personally started because I felt that. You know, when you're in the governor's office and you've worked under that Capitol Dome, Dave, for many, many years, it's a good starting point, just like we all do in January. What did we, what, by the way, what did we do last year? Let's take a look back. What did we do? And then what are we going to do moving forward? We do it with our own personal um, um, home life, our own personal self. We do assessments. Normally people do them in January. I know I do. And so we do for the state of the city. So the state of the city tonight, there are going to be Uh, A lot of uh, folks and people I thank, they're going to be some things that people are probably waiting to to hear. Um, And I'm going to be talking about specifically uh, four projects, four brand new projects in the city of Charleston. Two you know about, two a lot of folks we've been working with probably know about, uh, council members who uh, have uh, been meeting with us, community members who have been meeting with us that we're going to uh, take a big um, open door to tonight during the speech. Um, we're going to talk uh, a little bit about um, our city employees, obviously, the backbone of everything uh, that we do. We're going to talk about our financial wherewithal. It's it's something that never makes front page news. <laughs> it never makes front page news. But, you know, something tonight that I'm going to, you know, make note of in the state of the city. You know, when I got here five years ago, We only had $4 million in savings. That wasn't enough. Uh, So we made intentional steps to begin saving. Who knew we were going to have COVID and, you know, ARPA ARPA funds and, uh, you know, CARES Act funds come in. Um, But besides that, we wanted to make sure that we had enough in our back pocket for rainy days, for things uh, that are critical um, uh, to continue to not only help a city um, sustain, but grow and thrive. And so we went from 4 million and now we're sitting at 17 million. That's something I'm incredibly proud of. We're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to talk about the financial state of the city, not just projects, not just the fun stuff that does make normally, you know, front page of the paper. We're going to talk about the things that are actually important to city government, um, our employees, um, how much growth we've seen in the city of Charleston over the past couple of years. Um, and so I'm really excited about the opportunity um, to do that. 
Uh, again, we're talking with Mayor Goodwin of uh, the State of the City uh, speeches tonight as part of City Council. You know, Mayor, I had Tim Brady from the CVB yeah. on a couple of weeks ago, and I know numbers are still coming in. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it was a pretty darn good Christmas season in Charleston. <laughs> one of my good, one of my good friends that owns yeah. a business in downtown Charleston uh, told me that uh, as a business owner, it was the best year in the history of his company, which has yeah. been there to retail establishment. Yeah. It's been there for some time. Mm-hmm. From Holly Jolly Brawley to Light the Night, it was a pretty special time. I'm interested to see how these numbers play out. Heads and beds, as Brady and I always talk about. I'm interested to see how these numbers play out when the when the finals come out here soon. Yeah, you know, that's something, I've, and, and Tim knows this uh, as well as anybody in the state of West Virginia and, quite frankly, in the country. When you hear about tourism, uh, you think the fun people. Uh, those are the folks who do that. No, we're not. We're money people. I consider myself still a tourism person, being the former um, you know, Secret- Deputy Secretary of Commerce and Commissioner of Tourism, I can tell you. Tourism equals jobs. We're going to talk about that tonight. That's going to be a big chunk in the state of the city. We're going to reflect upon, oh, hey, by the way, what did we get um, with the USA table tennis, USA volleyball? By the way, in October, we announced that USA cycling coming to Charleston, West Virginia for Mm -hmm. five years. These are cyclists, Dave, that are going to be the winner, the men's and women's are going to be completing in Paris 2024. They're going to the Olympics. Those Olympic and you can't athletes. underestimate, Mayor, you can't no. underestimate, let me interrupt you one yeah, second, please. you can't underestimate how big this thing is for Charleston. It's this crazy. is the biggest single event that Charleston has probably ever hosted. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, because you've got all these people yeah. that are going to be coming in, you got the press corps that follow them and the journalists and so on and so forth. I mean, really, this is a huge, huge get for Charleston, and it is, for what it's going to take to pull this off from your street <laughs> department and architects and everything else, this is the biggest event Charles has probably ever done. Yeah, and, you know, let me make that quick connection if we can. I know you probably have to go to break soon. I'm looking at the clock sitting right in front of yeah. uh, run up front of your desk. But let me make this quick connection. We would have never had the opportunity to get this had we not paved roads, had we not come in five years ago, doubled the paving budget, and say, let's get our roads into shape. Yeah, we, buddy, we got, we got a long way to go still, and we still are keeping up that funding level. But when they came in, when USA Cycling came in, and they did a tour of the roads. We came back to the governor's con- or the governor, mayor's conference room, and we sat there. And they said, "Your roads are great." We said, "Okay, well, if, if we need to make modifications, we need to pave. Let us know. We'll put on the paving schedule." They're like, "Yeah, I don't know. We'll think about it." But I, they look really good. We, we were, we were oh, okay, great. That is what gets us there. Investment. We're going to talk about that. Keyword tonight is going to be investment. I'm going to say it about 27 times tonight. But unless and until we continue to invest in our structures, in our roads, in our sidewalks, in our bridges, uh, in the facilities that keep people coming and attracting people here, not only for the vibrancy, the vitality of a city and the people who live and work here already, uh, but those who are coming in uh, to visit, that is a big part of the speech tonight. All right, Mayor, we will be uh, watching intently. And, of course, you can follow uh, with the updates from Jeff and the news team at WVMetroNews.com and at WCHSNetwork.com. Mayor, we're going to let you get back out uh, to your duties out there running the snow. <laughs> I've got my boots on. I have my boots on now. I'll have my heels on later on. I appreciate you uh, yes. stopping by the studio, uh, and we'll let you go. I'll talk again soon. Thanks a lot. Hey, thanks, Dave. Appreciate you. All right. Uh, we'll be back right after this on The Voice of Charleston, WCHS. Brought to you by the Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses. Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses have been creating jobs in West Virginia since 1997. Hey, it's Sydney welcoming you to the new Thornhill Toyota. Nestled in the heart of the Thornhill Motor Mile, where the magic of the holidays meets the thrill of Toyota Thon. Whether you're dashing through the snow or cruising to Mama's house, Toyota Thon at Thornhill Toyota has something for everyone. Unwrap incredible savings, special financing, and the joy of driving a brand new Toyota. Make this season merrier with us at Thornhill Toyota. Let's go places with Toyota Thon and Thornhill. Shop Thornhill Toyota WV.com and on the road to total savings, US 119 Chapmanville. See Thornhill for all details. Nearly every day there's a company announcing new jobs in West Virginia. Thanks to the leadership of State Senator Eric Nelson, West Virginia's economy is growing and our future looks bright. Senator Eric Nelson has been part of the team advancing important pro-growth policies and because Senator Eric Nelson has helped control government spending, West Virginians are receiving the biggest tax cut in our state's history. Vote for more jobs. Vote for lower taxes. Vote for State Senator Eric Nelson. Paid for by the committee to elect Eric Nelson. 
Bigly Piggly Wiggly on Spring Street has served three generations of shoppers since 1955 as the largest locally owned independent grocery store in the area. The Joseph family owners grew up here, so you know they're invested in the community. They provide the biggest variety of choice meats, the freshest produce, an in-house deli bakery, great wine selection, and more of your favorite brands. Every purchase gives you gasoline points so you can save at our pumps. Order online for pickup at BiglyPigglyWiggly.com. Bigly Piggly Wiggly on Spring Street. No one and beats the pig. Join 580 WCHS for a heartwarming cause at the WVRC Media Drop Your Socks drive through Sponsored by Thornhill Automotive. Drive by our studios at 1111 Virginia Street East on January 18th starting at 6 a.m. to donate new socks for Charleston's needy. As the temps drop, your contribution, big or small, can make this winter warmer for those in need. Together on January 18th, let's help Mountain Mission provide comfort and warmth. Visit WCHSnetwork.com for more more details. Four minutes away from Tim and Dave Allen Show on 580 Live, brought to you part by Morgan & Morgan. If you're injured, hire Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. Closing moments of the show here. To no one's surprise, Donald Trump won the Iowa caucuses big time yesterday. The New York Times called it a sweeping victory, and it was. No doubt in my mind, I'm not sure if there ever was, Donald Trump will be the nominee from the Republican Party for president, setting up a battle that literally no one, well, at least 76% of the population, have said, according to polling, that they don't want a rematch between President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump. Now, if you're keeping score at home, Trump got 51%, Ron DeSantis with 21%, Nikki Haley with 19%. And I think this really says something about the power of Donald Trump. As I mentioned earlier, turn back the clock eight years. At that time, Iowa voters were firmly behind Ted Cruz, basically rejecting Trump. And oh, how that has changed. And interesting to note that change because uh, unlike many states, see West Virginia for one, the Republican establishment in Iowa has not exactly embraced Donald Trump, even after he was elected president. Um, the establishment wasn't necessarily behind Trump. Uh, talking about you know your state GOPs and things of that nature, but obviously uh, now the voters are. Uh, Trump's 30-point win is far and away a record for a contested, uh, contested caucus in the state of Iowa. So now Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis will place their attention on New Hampshire and South Carolina, while Trump will head to court today. And I will say this editorial comment here. If any anything good did come out of Iowa. It's the fact that Vivek Ramaswamy has ended his run for president. Uh, so he, he's done. So Haley and DeSantis will stick around for a little longer. But let's face it, it's Trump v. Biden 2.0 uh, this fall, a race again that 76 percent of Americans say they don't want. Polls have also shown that head-to-head Trump loses to Biden, but head-to-head Haley beats Biden. So there you go. I was done, North Carolina, or I'm sorry, South Carolina and New Hampshire covered up. Hey, my thanks to Judge Mary Claire Akers and also to the folks at the Allen Creek Alliance, Chrissy Bailey, for stopping by uh, today. Uh, I think I got her, her, her name wrong, but Chrissy, for stopping by. Also to Mayor Goodwin. Hoppy's coming up next. Uh, Ryan Nicholson, the A train, Anthony Harmon, and my cat Grady for producing the show. Thank you so much. I will see you tomorrow morning. Till then, have fun and love somebody. WCHSAM 96.5 FM Charleston and 104.5 Cross Lanes. A WVRC media station. We're proud to live here too.